So uh, we'll go go ahead and, and, and we're going to kind of jump into the same vein. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, some of the things that I've been seeing uh, in relation to drones, UASs, and how people are using them or plan on using them in this uh, new era that we find ourselves in. And, uh, you know, a lot of this, hopefully, you know, you guys can give some feed and we can discuss things and, and whatnot. Um, I see a lot of new names in here. Uh, so welcome. Uh, if, if you don't know, uh, my name is Josh, uh, 507. That's Dan. And then Dave is uh, Dave Messina. He's our president. Um, so a little little bit of introduction. So welcome. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Um, but uh, some of the things that, uh, you know, as I was prepping for this, kind of kind of stood out to me. And I was, you know, going through the news and and seeing how uh, different places and countries and and plans are to use UAS in this. Uh, kind of not quite post pandemic world but you know what what's in the pipeline right now so um there's some interesting ones and there's some ones that kind of make you think is this okay um so you know first off just because uh I have to hit uh Dave and my wife is from New Jersey uh so these folks on the on the east coast in in New York and and in New Jersey that are kind of at the the core of of what's going on right now um I did read a news article that drones in New Jersey uh are being deployed with uh voice messaging uh reminding people to social distance have you seen any of this dave i know you kind of live rural but have you heard any about this or uh, we we have and uh of course the uh, there's a, a little bit of joking among the uh, uh five boroughs uh, drone meetup uh guys and they're uh, they're being um uh, investigated for uh, running a, a mavic 2 uh just off the fdr drive uh, above a park and uh, asking people to practice uh, safe uh, social distancing. And so, yeah, then then uh, the joke, of course, is that, uh, you know, the, the uh, Jersey police saw this and felt it was a good a good idea. <laughs> right? <laughs> no good deed, right? <laughs> this is, yeah. You mean to say people are flying drones up and down with speakers and being like, hey, uh, you need to back up? You're too close to that person. That's exactly right. right. That's it, amazing. A lot of it is, is I think it's just pre-recorded messaging, like you know, like an announcement in a store. You know, please remember to oh, keep geez. six feet away from. But I will get into somebody who is using or plans on using that exactly what you're talking about in a second. But you know, so I assume they're also using it when up. they see larger groups of people that shouldn't be congregating, maybe. That's but definitely those, a possibility. Those people are not listening, though. They don't care. It's like those are the people that's doing that that just don't give a rat's ass about that. Though. They yeah. just they they like I'm good. I don't care. I'm not sick. And that's all the hard headed people that are doing that. So I, I don't think they're, gonna, they're not gonna listen to that drone anyway. They're gonna be like ah, we look if they're not throwing stuff at the drone. That's right. <laughs> well, at the same time, I think you know two things are happening is number one, you know, somebody's trying to, to go out and do the extra mile and uh, really try and keep people safe. And, you know, if it was, you know, the five boroughs guys, you know, those guys are probably doing a lot of that just, you know, out of the goodness of their heart, you know, and, and trying to keep people safe. Now, obviously the, the Jersey police department have, you know, they're they're actually trying to contain something and and that that makes sense too you know and i would say personally wouldn't bother me but on the other hand the other thing that's happening is that um it's, it's creating an avenue for the public to see the kind of good that drones can do and from that side i think it's a it's a win-win you know yeah it's a it's a delicate uh, balance because you, you know, it, it's a, to me, it's fine. You know, if the police are using um, the drones, that you know, that can be viewed you know, viewed particularly if the message is, you know, sensible, blasting out of the uh, out of its little loudspeaker. Um, but you don't you don't want people to abuse it. So I agree. It is it's a good uh, demonstration of oh yeah, you know that that can be done uh, uh, done positively. 
and I know uh, UPS is um, uh, moving um, uh, tissue and uh, and blood uh, across town in uh, in North Carolina. That's uh, and they're also doing that in Ireland. Same mm-hmm. uh, same uh, affiliated uh, uh, company. And so in Ar- in Ireland, I guess it was off to a small uh, island uh, that was uh, 12 uh, kilometers uh, from the mainland or the main island. So yeah, I think that yeah, those are those are definitely uh, positives and things that we're we're hopeful to uh, to see more of. Yeah, what it reminds me of a uh, an operation we did. Desert Shield, I guess that was way back in 89 19, or 90. 90 yeah, 90, yeah. 90, yeah. Um, so we had the uh, the frontline troops that were kind of dug in on the Iraqi side. And we would just cruise up and down in a Humvee with uh, 900 watt loudspeaker systems. Um, kind of airing some propaganda most of the time. But every now and then we would have the sound of helicopter gunships coming in just to scare the crap out of them. <laughs> so, so the crowd that's not dispersing just uh, put it on the second audio recording of, of gunfire. <laughs> right. So on that same token, so I know, uh, and you'll have to forgive me, I forgot to write down some of the company names, but uh, there is a company that is looking to deploy a drone uh, with a 100 watt loudspeaker uh, capable of at height uh, reaching 80 decibels to uh, utilize it in crowd management situations. Um, Now the article that I read, and I will try and find these again, I'm sorry, I just took notes, forgot to provide links. Um, However, the uh, article that I read I didn't see a mention of being able to use it to disperse crowds in terms of, you know, like you would uh, like a sonic, sonic, I hate to use the word gun, but sonic cannon or or something like that. But, um, but definitely along the same lines of uh, law enforcement being able to deploy these in situations, both, you know, uh, in the current situation and in future situations where, you know, potentially there's something going on like i don't know maybe a protest or uh you know social distancing and 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 whatnot so uh i did see that and that kind of falls into line with uh what people were talking about um in terms of the police using it maybe feels a little bit more big brothery uh and being able to be deployed off of a a vehicle uh with return to home uh capabilities and stuff so that was a pretty interesting article i will see if i can find all these articles i'm sorry guys um let's see i was uh, one of the, one of the things that's going to hold the police departments back at least in our area is the air wing unit of the of the police departments uh they actually don't like the drones because they're kind of takes away from some of their, um, I want to say, some of their power because everyone's like, oh, we need a helicopter, a helicopter. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, we got drones, and drones can do what you're doing. They can look for people, whatever, and mm-hmm. it helicopters, the, the helicopter pilots are really not liking that. You know, they kind of like, eh, and, you know, at least in the Washington, D.C. area, it's like only a few um it's I want to say it's like maybe like one or two departments that now have drones and the other ones are holding back. And for what I've heard, it's because of the helicopter pilots complaining like, no, we don't need that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You know? Yeah. And, and interestingly, I've got uh, a buddy who is um, one of the FAA drone advisory committee members is a colonel in um, the Dallas PD and a helicopter pilot. And he's very much into drones. So I, uh, a little more enlightened view, and so there he's working hard to make sure that there's a good integration, and uh, you know he because he sees it as uh, uh, economical as well as you know, he wants to be able to be safe 
uh, flying his police helicopter. And uh, maybe he loved the idea, for example, of uh, shielded uh, uh, shielded operations. And so, you know, it's uh, it is an interesting point. I uh, I noticed that uh, one of you one of you guys, uh, Duck My Squee, has uh, the benefit of a uh, a brilliant uh, prime minister, if I'm saying her name right, Jacinda Ardern, who is being viewed around the world as um, one of the finest examples of how to manage and uh, work a a pandemic crisis. So uh, uh, and. Uh, and Duck, Ducky Mesquite is telling us that they're on complete lockdown, and they've also been extremely successful on keeping the numbers very, very low. And that's uh, mm -hmm. that's something that we have absolutely not done in New York State, and we passed over 10,000 deaths in the state uh, today. So my hat's off to the uh, New Zealanders. <laughs> they probably <laughs> Doug McSqueeze yes. is probably not happy about that. He was like, "Yeah, we do have to stay in the house 24 <laughs> 7 well, I'm sure I'm sure they're not happy, but boy, uh, yeah, it's um for those of us in New York, um, you know, uh, 9/11 was uh, a you know a heartbeat away, and uh, it's a very similar feeling to to lose uh you know fellow uh fellow New Yorkers and uh, literally everyone, everyone we talk to is, uh, uh, you know, has impacted uh, directly having lost someone they know, you know, the, the levels of separation is usually uh, zero or one. And so I, I appreciate that it's, uh, it's no fun to be uh, uh, completely in a lockdown situation, but, uh, but there, there, you know, some old farts like me and uh, people with, uh, uh, compromised systems who are very uh, who are alive because of it. So appreciate it. So, <laughs> so next up on uh, the use of drones would be uh, an article also coming out of uh, New Jersey um, on utilizing drones to detect whether you're running a fever. A fever. Um, being able to, I'm serious, using FLIR uh, infrared technology um, and uh, detect sneezing, your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and social distancing. So this is where it starts to get super kind of big brothery uh, for yeah, me, at much. least. That's way, yeah, that's way too much. What if I just so, got what, what if I just got finished running and you walk my like, beep? He had look, he has a fever. No, I was running. You know. All of a sudden you're tackled, right? So right, exactly. Yeah. Hazmat, it's like seen out of ET, right? So right. Hazmat right, crew yeah. walks in, and so this this uh, kind of kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. I, I'm not saying it's not an ingenious use of the technology, but I don't think we're ready for that yet. Um, and I don't think uh, um, uh, at least the U.S. I don't know about anybody else if we're ready for this. So, um, but uh, you know, obviously there's some privacy concerns. They're saying it's not you know keyed out to uh, identify specific people, just keep people safe, remind you know along those same lines. So, uh, just wanted to draw that one in there. Just perusing uh, that video a little bit, it looks like they even detected people coughing. Right. Crazy. I mean, with FLIR, you can definitely do that. So anytime, any kind of, you know, if you sneeze or you cough, you're emitting heat from your body and it's going to show up versus the background uh, uh, background heat. So. Well, with that, if they're saying it's not targeting individual people, then what's the point of it? Well, yes, I, I get it. I mean, you know, that's kind of the catch-22, right? Why deploy it if you're not using it to identify if individuals that are any not individual, Then there's no point in right. using it because it's not going to affect them. Yep. It's a technology uh, demo to let people know you could use it if you wanted to. Right. Oops. No, no, no. Stop. Okay. Um, let's see. 
sorry, I had a video automatically start playing as I was pulling up one of the articles. Um, so this one, and, and guys, I'm not, you know, I'm picking articles that interested me. I'm not really picking any, you know, particular news source. So uh, just for those who have issues with Fox. Um, but uh, this one would be a company called Zipline that is spooling up to be able to deliver coronavirus medication within the next two weeks so i don't know what that looks like uh you know beyond some of the uh you know medications they're currently using maybe vaccines or something like that down the road um but um it all kind of depends on on where we're at but um I, you know, I kind of asked myself the same question. I don't know technically why. I mean, maybe in a hot spot area, it would be advisable. But for the vast majority of the United States, I don't see that this is, you know, Plausible. super necessary or even possible. I mean, well, they were a doing lot of ground to cover. Like, like this uh, with Ebola in, uh, in Africa dropping in. Uh, medicine so that they would not add to the number of people um, potentially infected. There is something that's similar to that. I think it's in Uganda where they have drone network that goes across the country that can deliver blood to certain hospitals and stuff like that. Yeah, that's amazing. interesting. Yeah, that that is really amazing. So uh, just again, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, one of the other things, and, uh, I do have extended family who lives in Israel, but, um, drones in Israel are being used to monitor self-isolation rules of those who are tested positive. So, um, they have been using, uh, drones as a surveillance, uh, which is kind of an interesting, uh, I, you know, again, kind of privacy concern, but at the same time, they're monitoring those who have tested positive to ensure that they're not, uh, uh, you know, wandering about and infecting others. Um, was, Israel, so, was Israel's drone program already in place in, because of other things that they have going on there? Such as, that's counterterrorism and, and, and that kind of thing. So... Um, yeah, they, they've already got a pretty extensive drone program, uh, from what I understand. So, uh, it was just a simple modification of that, I'm sure. So, um, let's see. Uh, one of the ones I really wanted to bring up and duck my squeeze, this guy's from your side of the, of the pond there, um, Bruce XJet is using his drone, and I saw this video today, and I thought it was pretty pro probably pro probably one of the best uses of a drone. He is using his to show his community, um, the neighborhood. He just goes up out of his backyard, you know, gets some nice panoramic shots, shows everybody what you know the community looks like and what's going on. And he provides that for his uh, for his area. And honestly, I, I I can't think of a you know a more uh, great way to keep everybody kind of you know as a community pulled together. Um, obviously, he's reaching out to his neighbors. I'm sure he's lived in his area for a long time, knows a lot of people. But uh, honestly, I'd really like to to commend him. Uh, I know sometimes he's on on our show here but uh um bruce if you're listening which a lot of times he catches up great idea um uh, that's really a, a a really positive thing to do for your community so was, was that the one where he was was someone was flying along and filming people on the balcony clapping and other stuff and, you know, uh there was one he posted i think it was just a couple of days ago um If you're talking, Quiso, I we can't hear you. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> um, so uh, it was posted, I think, six days ago. I just watched the video today. I think it was the one where he said somebody called the called Casa on him uh, for flying in over the lake behind his house. Um, but uh, I know he's been providing those videos. So that was a, a I thought it was a really cool thing. So. Um, so ideas of other ways drones could be used in the kind of time we're in. Uh, what do you guys think? What would be good uses of our technology um, that uh, beyond you know some of the things I've shared that that you could imagine uh, us using you know our drones for? kind of an interesting thought right you know a lot of times i would say a lot of people right now there's a lot of uh at least in the united states we've got uh you know a lot of uh the economy is kind of uh in a in a rocky place and uh, i'm sure a lot of people are you know uh looking for jobs and and you know interesting ways to, to turn their hobby into uh, something, uh, viable. Um, but you know, I know, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people have been looking to the 3d printed world for, you know, solutions to shortages, right? So a lot of people have been printing the, uh, the, uh, ear savers and printing, uh, face shields and, a couple of people have gotten face mask designs approved by the National Institute of Health and stuff like that. But what kind of good uh, could drones provide? Um, you know, I think, you know, bringing together your community, you know, TextJet, he's saying he's considered doing what Bruce is doing. I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, ways for uh, us to interact with you know our kids and people who are you know kids are all out of school right now and they're you know they are uh homeschooling and, and but you know get with your community you know i know like our community uses next door it's an app on the phone where you, it's kind of like facebook for your neighborhood right so you know partnering with your community and even just you know sparking some imagination in kids is is kind of something that i with is you know hey i'm gonna be flying my drone down the street at you know 5 p.m you know bring your kids out and do what they think or you know something like that i, I think that's a brilliant thought um just to get kids interested in the technology um what's this grandparents use drone easter egg delivery that's awesome <laughs> Well, yeah, beverage uh, delivery. I know that's uh, been kind of going on in our neighborhood. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, actually, <laughs> one of our one of my neighbors has a matrice, and he's been using it to deliver uh, six and twelve packs. But I live in a small little. You know, we don't even have a police department. Small little town. Right, so little community. It, it, yeah. And we're not. Yeah, we're in. A uh, uh, twelve that, pack. Uh, <laughs> to live in a twelve pack. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I was actually kind of surprised, but he he got it up. <laughs> uh, that's, I, I, that's crazy. <laughs> I've seen a less than hundred gram drone uh lift a six pack of coke before which blew me away i mean the thing was literally just motors but um uh, it uh you'd be surprised at the at the at what some of these guys can do all right any other thoughts on good uses for uh for drones It's illegal here. So it's, it's generating conversations. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of. Uh, I think Bruce was saying that you can only fly in your backyard and you can't really go anywhere else. And you know, obviously he's respecting that. But um, you know, I know that. 
And in the U.S., you'd need a 135 or a 91 part 135 or a one or a 91 to legally uh, be delivering or carrying cargo. So, but those are <laughs> those are good uh, <laughs> those are good pastimes. Yeah, I didn't yeah. say it was legal, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is it still cargo if you put something on and it happens to fall off while you're flying? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, so, so er- areas of use, uses of drones are search and rescue uh, under inspection. Yeah. There's uh, agriculture. There's manufacturing inspections. There's process mm-hmm. plant uh, inspection. And uh, one of uh, buddies on the on the DAC is uh, an executive for uh, BNSF, and uh, they use uh, drones for railway inspection. They've also mm-hmm. uh, and Cell tower and inspection. Tel- telco, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So those are all um, either 107 uh, or mostly 107, and some yeah. of them uh, 107 with a beyond visual line of sight. So definitely commercial, but uh, that definitely also uh, uh, drones that uh, our skills are applicable to uh, to help out. All right, so um, in other news, uh, as I was searching just before the show, so you'll forgive me, I have not read this, so I'm going to preface it with that. Um, but uh, Attorney General William Barr just issued um, a 22-page document on counter drone uh, um, authority use of counter drone and counter drone technologies. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, again, I will post a link to it. I have not read it. I do not know what's in it. Um, so from what I'm understanding though, he is calling out specific, um, situations or locations where, uh, um, counter drone technologies would be uh, applicable. So um, I just wanted to inform people again, have not read it, uh, but I do want to drop it for you guys in case you do want to read it. Um, I will catch up on this uh, in the next couple of days so that I can talk uh, coherently about it. Um, I don't know at this point if it's anything to worry about, but you know, again, a thorough read through would uh, will you know tell if that's true. So this is a document directly um, uh, to um, the ATF, the DEA, the FBI, uh, Bureau of Prisons, uh, United States Marshals and justice management and executive office of the United States attorney. So, um, but, uh, uh, I did want to, I saw this as I was searching for news articles on and, um, I didn't want to leave it out. So at any rate, that is that, uh, Dave, do we have any updates from the, D- uh, drone advisory committee? Uh, you were, um, Moving along with uh, two of the uh, two of two of the um, tasking groups, and uh, we've got the um, UTM, the um, Unmanned uh, Traffic Management uh, Group. Uh, that's being led by um, um, AIA, uh, Aerospace Industry Association. They're taking a rather uh, rigid view, and they're they're looking at uh, ConOps version two. Uh, which is a, a requirements document, and uh, they are not being terribly open to a lot of changes. So, um, uh, we are trying. There, uh, there is a, uh, a a coalition of us who are pushing uh, for um, how to uh, split out uh, so that uh, so that we don't need UTM. Uh, for every UAS, and that, that's one of the big differences from ConOps 1 versus ConOps 2, is that the new ConOps said if you're going to be flying a UAS, you need to participate in the UTM. So we're trying to get uh, that um, uh, changed back to the way it was, and it says that you may participate, and so uh, open up some ability for recreational. 
uh, on the safety culture uh, task group, we had a, a meeting with uh, a number of the leaders. Uh, it's uh, also you know, it's about the same number of people working on that tasking group, about uh, close to 30, and uh, folks from uh, industry as uh, aviation, manned aviation industry, uh, drone industry, uh, com on the commercial side, the only two uh, representatives for recreational are the AMA and us, or and me and this. Um, and the uh, the safety one, I think there's a uh, they're much they're they're quite open-minded, much to my uh, delight, uh, and that has been uh, the case in the numerous uh, or the last uh, three. Uh, tasking groups that I've worked in, and so these folks really on the safety culture. And the idea there is, if the you know there um, they we have a great safety culture in manned aviation in the United States. What is it that we can take from that to try to ingrain the same safety culture? So they were open to the point that you know we have not had any deaths in recreational drones so we have a we have a different baseline what is it that we're trying to do certainly with manned aircraft you know we're trying to keep people safe and to keep them alive but you know what is it that we're trying to achieve so they all took took that seriously and they, these were uh, airline and uh, aircraft manufacturer and uh, alpa uh, is leading that one, Airline Pilots Association. So very open-minded group, and that I'm optimistic will come up with some uh, good ideas that will uh, be beneficial to uh, newcomers. So that's uh, so we're clicking along. The um, uh, these reports will be uh, completed, and um, uh, the next DAC is supposed to be somewhere um, towards the end of June. And uh, no news on a location or whether they are going to, or the location was supposed to be Washington, D.C. Well, uh, I'm hoping that they'll move it to uh, a remote uh, location, you know, a, not, not a location not, not named, but literally a, a virtual meeting. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens on that. The, the location and the, the meeting logistics are normally announced a little less than one month. Uh, so... Uh, third week in May, we should start to know uh, one where and specific uh, specific date when we're all going to have to present the findings of these two tasking groups. Questions or comments on that? I mean, it's a little, it's a little, it's. it's I mean, the the good news is um, we've got a voice, and um, you know, more and more, uh, I, I know now about half the people on these phone calls, and. Uh, once again, you know, my modus operandi is to take uh, take on homework, and uh, that gives me a better voice uh, you know, each time uh, we speak up. Absolutely. Um, have we heard anything on the uh, recreation or the knowledge test for recreational flyers? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. So it's been quiet on that front. Yeah, that was January. 21, yeah, 21 or 14, mm -hmm. early part of January that uh, we were one of 12 uh, companies to work uh, as a cohort on the administration of the knowledge, uh, UAS knowledge exam, and uh, um, we have not heard uh, anything back from the FAA on that. So TextJet has a question, uh, what's the goal of these two committees on the DAC? Okay, the um, good question, sorry, should have uh, started with that. Um, the goal of the UTM is to provide uh, comments on the on CONOPS V2 and comments uh, that are uh, particular uh, to or from the from the uh, drone community. And so this is um, an operations requirements document. It is um, predominantly around. Um, unmanned traffic management, and so it's the details of um, you know, how do you respond to uh, uh, to, to this uh, document. The uh, objective of the of the safety culture is um, identify areas to the FAA um, 
where we can utilize manned aviation safety culture uh, to enhance the safety culture of uh, the UAS. And that's, those are both paraphrased heavily, but that's my um, interpretation of what we're uh, working on in the two groups. So in the UTM one, um, that's more for how the UTMs are going to work, who's going to participate, who's going to be required to participate in the UTMs, uh, that kind of thing, right? Correct. And the, the focus right now is, is about 98% commercial. And so they're thinking about 107 uh, interacting with uh, manned aviation. <clears throat> um, I, um, they're, they are defined, well, the, the UTM is well defined, and this is more requirement, you know, further requirements uh, on the UTM. And then the second group is on, on the safety culture. So they're two separate um, asking groups. Okay. So do you foresee like the, the safety culture, the, 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 the ideas that come out of the safety culture being incorporated in the FAA's? kind of safety guidelines for flight, uh, both recreational and uh, commercial? Um, I, I do. I, I see the, um, <clears throat> I, I see a, a number of uh, positive uh, tenants and the, the safety uh, folks around the FAA uh, reference a SMS, Safety Management System, which has for tenants, and so uh, they take this very seriously, as they should, uh, because we're talking about manned flight. Uh, and so there's um, there's education, there's oversight, and so I'm uh, I'm really encouraged that we'll be able to uh, use a lot of the same techniques that are used in um, in manned aviation uh, to help. Uh, bring people along. So there's there is a lot on how do you encourage a group or a club or a team or a member of uh, individuals. Ah, okay, good. Uh, that to uh, to to improve their sa improve safety uh, as uh, as a group because it's not a uh, uh, an individual uh, activity. And so I think there are some. Uh, some good areas that uh, that we're going to see some benefits. Awesome. So to answer your question, TextJet, uh, how do you does UTM relate to remote ID? So, uh, yeah, the UTMs would advisably at this point, the way the remote ID document is written, would be the centers of the USS philosophy. So throughout the remote ID document, you see unmanned service suppliers. So a lot of that would probably fall under these UTMs. However, um, again, that's kind of up in the air. And then in terms of the task groups, obviously the different task groups that uh, have been implemented in these uh, in the D in the drone advisory committee are to kind of hash out ideas. Now, uh, the downside is is that sometimes suggestions are set aside uh, from these task groups. Sometimes they're the suggestions are taken. So it's it's you know again it's about presenting data. Um, through a, a group of people who are working on these these task groups so that the FAA can be better informed of what's happening from, uh, I guess they call it their stakeholders, so uh, the people participating in it. Um, now, the, the upside is, is that um, the Joint Advisory Committee is made up of selected people from different companies, different industries, uh, that kind of thing. However, you do not need to be on a member of the Drone Advisory Committee to actually work on these task groups. Um, so uh, while we are not, the FPVFC is not a member of the Drone Advisory Committee, Dave has taken on a ton of work uh, that we are massively appreciative of in working with these task groups to uh, kind of get the recreational side uh, 
uh, heard and inform people of what we're doing, how we're how we're going about it, our record of safety, um, that we're not a threat to the national security, uh, and, and all these other things that lead to greater regulation and and uh, that kind of thing. So. Uh, just to clarify some of that, uh, I think I hit yeah, there, most of that. There are a number, yes, yes, and there are. Uh, if you look at the the members of the uh, drone advisory committee, uh, DJI is there. Uh, I mentioned BNSF, um, Boeing is there. Uh, American Airlines is on. Um, Helicopter Association, um, Dallas PD, New York uh, Police Department, New York Fire Department. So there are, it goes from aircraft manufacturers to associations, uh, ALPA, as I mentioned, Airline Pilots Association, AIA, Aerospace Industry Association, AOPA, uh, Aircraft Owner and Pilots Association. So they are heavily, heavily skewed to man this um, aviation. Uh, however, uh, it's been great that when we take on the work and do the homework and lead a team, uh, just everyone on the uh, on the deck is <clears throat> really helpful and very supportive of recreational. Bunches of these guys are engineers and pilots and modelers as well, so they're they're usually uh, receptive, and they're also they've worked with the FAA as well as with Congress for decades, and so we get a lot of helps and tips uh, as we go along. So it's been been a great education and it's been uh, very productive for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I know we had some new guys, so I kind of wanted to expand on that a little, uh, just so you understand what the, the drone advisory committee is and, and the kind of work that, that uh, Dave has been uh, doing uh, for the recreational committee in these task groups. So, um, but uh, it, it's hard at the same time, either, you know, there's literally only two representatives you know, maybe two and a half if you want to count DJI, but of the recreational community. So um, if it weren't for Dave and the work he's doing, our, our voice would be very small. And uh, so massively appreciative of him to that. Now, in terms of remote ID, I know that's still on everybody's mind. We still have not heard anything, and I imagine it's going to be a while before we hear anything solid. Um, so just know that uh, we are still watching that, and it's still on our mind as well. Um, as we kind of uh, come out of uh, the uh, current situation that we're in, um, you know, we will start to spool back up uh, our campaign uh, against remote ID. Uh, not really campaign; that's the wrong word. Our, <laughs> but uh, uh, a congressional our, campaign. So uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, we need to uh, kind of give our our leaders uh, in government the ability or the opportunity to address the current issue before we start harping them about uh, another. So um, please understand that we are not uh, running away from the situation or, you know, shying away from it. Uh, we just want to be able to come at it with a voice of reason and, um, you know, in the, all things in the right time, I guess. So uh, I just want you to be aware of that. So um, beyond that, uh, Dan or Dave, do we have anything else? Does anybody have any questions, comments, anything we can uh, answer for them? I just wanted to, to mention, uh, I posted up on our uh, uh, Facebook group, uh, today, a copy and paste of a, a post that uh, Tyler Brennan put up. Uh, to me, it's this type of um, uh, activity that uh, really benefits us as a community and benefits you know, the communities we live in. Um, Tyler uh, tracked down an ear protector for uh, masks, and he got a request for 4,000 of them from Elmhurst Hospital, which uh, is uh, Elmhurst made uh, the national news as is a, a hospital in New York City, and they are operating at capacity. It's a, a pretty uh, difficult. Uh, uh, that's grossly understated. It is a enormously difficult place to work. 
Elm Elmhurst, E L M H U R S T. You said, I believe you said Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Brennan. The That's tripping Elm me out because my cousin married a Tyler Brennan. I don't believe it's the same person. Okay. Well, this Tyler Brennan is the uh, owner of uh, Race Day Quads, and he's also an active um, United States Air Force F 15 pilot. And uh, uh, so he's an amazing young guy. And uh, he has uh, he he started putting together the ability to sell uh, 3D printed uh, parts for our drones, and so he picked up the idea that hey you know I can I you know we can make masks we should be able to do something to help uh, in the COVID uh, in uh, battle, yeah. and uh, so he's uh, he's doing that. I posted it and I saw a number of uh, responses so. Uh, this community uh, having a, uh, a broad spectrum of great skills uh, can help in all sorts of different ways. Uh, there's also another buddy is working on a um, on a mask and has uh, 3D designs for that. So I would just encourage everyone to do what you can uh, as this uh, this virus is sweeping across the United States and. Uh, living here in New York, uh, going through this first, it's uh, the numbers are brutal. And uh, uh, you know, if someone says, "Oh, it's just a, like a bad flu," it's not. It is it's much worse. And uh, uh, please take it take it very seriously. So that was so uh, this... Elmhurst Elmhurst Hospital. Yeah, there's yes, a there's correct. a um, there's an address in the link I post on the on the uh, post there. Uh, yeah, let me... yeah, I was just there last week, actually, installing 45 new patient monitors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Bless your heart. So, Tyler I'm is asking for help. Too, so. <laughs> yeah. So, Tyler's asking for help. In order of four, and he doesn't know that he has enough material on hand. Uh, so, he's asking anybody who is capable of printing these. Um, this would be fine out of a TPU, uh, your printer. Uh, or not TPU, I'm sorry, uh, PLA. Right. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes, I'm sorry. PLA, uh, which is a cheap material. It's easy to get a hold of. It's biodegradable. Uh, and uh, uh, Or PETG. Uh, PETG would be a little more rigid. Um, I will post the address. He, uh, The address he posted is for direct ship to Elmhurst Hospital. Uh, let me post that. Uh, right there, Richard Michelle Lamb. Um, that is his contact. Um, I think that's the biomed. Yeah. So um, I will post that. And uh, if you have the capability of doing something, uh, please, please help out. Um, I will probably be spooling up my printer to do as much of these as I can. So. Um, at any rate, uh, anybody else have anything? Oh, like an email address? Um, for Tyler Sar or for um, Elmhurst? Wow. Uh, and that is, I'm reading uh, Duck, while you're working that one, Josh, I'm reading Duck My Squeeze on the brighter note, the whole of New Zealand had only 15 more cases today. Wow, well, that's that awesome. Fan that's fantastic. Stay home, stay uh, safe. Here, here. Uh, you could probably just... I don't have Tyler's email address. I don't know... Well, I do have it. I know that he would be comfortable with me sharing it. So uh, what we will say is you could probably contact him via Race Day Quad's website. Um, let me get... Let's see. Hard the uh, Facebook... Uh, right. Race Day Quad's Facebook group as well. Yes. That's that's a good. Idea. He's 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 very he's always present on the Race Day Quads Facebook group. I'm guessing Sar doesn't want to use Facebook at all or something. I totally understand that. Uh, I'm just trying to get uh, uh, the contact page for RDQ here. You could probably hit him up in the customer service on their website. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where I was kind of going. Here. If my computer will. Uh, Sar wrote that he'll find Operate. it. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So, oh, here we go. Of course, it would be that easy. There we go. Um, 
So, uh, at any rate, I think that's about all I have uh, with two minutes to spare. Uh, anything else that anybody would like to share? Or... Last opportunity. I got text chat typing something. Yeah, I don't have much to add. I didn't know what uh, did not know what to expect on my first meeting. But well, hey, you know, it's been like a load of you know. Hey, you know, we try and keep them informative. Of, it's really interesting. Well, you know, a lot of times we're talking about like the probably the last uh, I don't know six or so meetings have been about ID, what's going on with that, the protest and remote ID. Um, oh, that was a lot of it, um, but. Uh, you know, absence of that, you know, we try and keep things informative and, and, you know, I try and come up with topics that uh, invoke some thought and uh, get people talking. So uh, if you guys have any suggestions well, it's a, or. It's a bit of a curveball, but uh, uh, so my neighbor is, uh, he's already like gotten his exemption, the 107 okay. or part, whatever that is. And he informed me that we live we live like literally 200 feet away from the edge of the airspace. Uh, I'm near an airport. Mm -hmm. Apparently, to fly my drone, I need the clearance. Well, not necessarily. So, uh, what you can do is you can download an app like Kitty Hawk or uh, Airman that which offer are, which are free. Yeah, which are absolutely free. And you use that to apply for approval flight controlled airspace um and the so app will know that you see, you get uh when you register for your exemption you are posted your name and address are on the faa website so not, so not necessarily if you're just recreationally you can just apply for a lance uh, uh, authorization and basically you just tell them where you're flying when you're flying how high you're going and within, uh, you know, usually about 60 seconds um, or a couple of minutes, uh, you will get a yay or nay uh, via the app. Um, and that will give you what you need. Now, if you are a 107 pilot and you are performing or you are flying in the performance of work, uh, then uh, the process is a little bit different. Um, so, but if you're just flying recreationally, you're just flying FPV, uh, a Lance, uh, the Lance, uh, system is there to, uh, help you with that. And, uh, well, there's also, uh, the, well, the app will give you most of what you need. Thank you, uh, Dan, for yeah, posting awesome. the, the maps there. So these maps, you can type in, uh, your address and it'll show you uh, whether you're falling into a zone that requires uh, Lance or if you're outside of it. And it'll also post maximum uh, altitudes. So there are some grids that are that are relatively close to an airport that will only need to grant that will only grant you up to 50 feet. The other ones further away will go up to uh, 400 feet, and then anything outside of one of those grids will uh, you're free to fly. Also have a maximum so. of 400 feet. Yes, but well, no, yeah. but no, no lance Max. requirement is required out in uncontrolled airspace, just as Josh, yep. was, so Josh was saying. Don't uh, forget, con based on this map, confirmed. I am barely inside. Apparently, I'm in a block of three hundred. Yeah, so if you are inside that, uh, then you will need to apply for lance every time you fly. Uh, but it's a very simple process. Yeah, it's really easy. You just That's get one of those easy. apps on it's your like, phone. Just click on the app, and it it's automated. Like you're just. Yeah, you just say, uh, I, want to, I, I want to go fly depends. now, click a few boxes, and you get a text message saying you're good to go. Uh, Dan actually has a video, do. don't you, on using Lance? It's probably getting a little old now, but I could still find it. You can DM me that. Or... There are still a lot of airports that don't, and uh, airspaces that aren't part of the uh, Lance system, so you can't get automatic authorization. Um, DOD airspace is typically one that you can't get authorization in a lot of areas. Agreed. Um, so you can go on to the, uh, you know, the drone website uh, for the FAA okay. and apply for a waiver. And they're usually pretty quick about it. Yeah. Um, I'd done one that it allowed me to fly within a half mile of my house until one of my uh, friends who flies locally was able to get one for the entire Class D airspace Excellent. that we wow. both reside in. 
Nice. So I had mine adjusted to that. That's awesome. Super and good. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, glad we could uh, help you with that. That's awesome. All right. With that, guys, I will give you the rest of your evening back. Thank you for joining us. And we will be back in two weeks.